We should be going live any second now. Okie dokie, we are live. We are at one minute. The Hammett Museum artist members gratefully thank the following people for help in putting together this virtual exhibition program. Bibiana Huang Matais, Curator. Douglas Ridgway, Webmaster. All museum sponsors and supporters, including Arts Westchester, the Westchester County Government, M&T Bank, New York Park Recreation and Historic Preservation, the Japan Foundation Center for Global Partnership, the Color Group, Raw Design Lab, the JCC Fund, the Japanese Chamber of Commerce and Industry of New York. We also thank the museum director, our board members, and volunteers. Now, allow us to proudly introduce our Master of Ceremonies, the renowned poet, the poet laureate of Dutchess County, New York, and an important community voice, Bettina Wilkerson, known as Poet Gold. Welcome everyone. Barren. Nothing is ever truly barren, a void, empty space. Dry land was once fertile ground, glistening with morning dew. Darkness hovers the gift of introspection. A heart broken holds within its crevice a seed of healing. The universe is full of dreamers, even if they can't always see the stars. Nothing is ever truly barren, a void, empty space. Welcome everyone to the Hammond Museum August Virtual Artist Member Exhibit open to artist members both nationally and internationally. We are pleased to include 21 multidisciplinary artists from six US states and DC and three countries. The exhibit is available to view for a full year, 365 days on the Hammond website. And artwork is also available for sale and poetry is available for commissioned work. Please become acquainted. 
with each artist by visiting their artist profile, also available on Hammond website. I would like to introduce to you Douglas Ridgway from Roar Design Lab. He is our webmaster guru and our atlas for this extraordinary event. Douglas, take it away. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, introduction. So we are here once again, streaming live on Facebook with the Hammond uh, Museum Artists for the uh, August exhibition. Uh, today's show is going to be great. Uh, if you have been here before, you know the quality of work we exhibit here. This month is no different. Like you said, we have 21 artists and 30 works of art to show and three countries, six states, as well as Washington DC represented here. So we are going to start off with our August montage uh, of the exhibition. I had a lot of fun creating this one. Uh, it's accompanied by uh, an original composition by the accomplished and fabulous Nancy Tucker. Her piece is called Dance of the Midnight Mouse. I think you're gonna like it. Uh, after the montage, we will get to meet all of the artists we could uh, gather here today and even one who could not be here today. She's mountain climbing and uh, I think she couldn't get good Wi-Fi signal or something like that. But we have a small video of that of her. So next we will view the whole live exhibition and learn uh, a little bit about each piece. Uh, and then we close out the live feed until next month when we do it all again. So in closing, uh, I would just like to remind everyone that depending on your Wi-Fi and technical capabilities, uh, some of you may experience uh, glitches and stutters during the video. Just know that you have the option to view them directly and in their entirety uh, on our website uh, without the, any of the glitches. So without further ado, here is the August montage. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
wonderful. Once again, that was Nancy Tucker original solo guitar composition for the August montage video. Now let's meet the participating artists for our August ex exhibition. Artists, when I announce your name, please unmute and say who you are, where you are from, and your artistic medium. So let's start at the beginning. Nancy Tucker. Hi, my name is Nancy Tucker. I live in Goshen, Connecticut, and uh, I'm a comp composer. I'm not a composition. And um, I work with guitar and keyboard and anything else that makes a sound. Thank you, Nancy. Welcome. Thank you. Dustin Osborne. Good morning, everyone. I live in Chehalis, Washington, near Puget Sound, and my art form is photography. Thank you, Dustin. I believe, I'm not sure if Karen is here, but I'll announce her. Karen Fitzgerald. Okay. Brian Sheridan. I'm Brian Sheridan. I live in Ossining, New York, just north of New York City. My medium in this exhibit is vector, roster, and analog digital assembly. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Cece McInturf. Hi, I'm Cece Cole McInturf. I'm a sculptor and I work outside Washington, D.C. and Alexandria, Virginia. Welcome, Cece. Carol Oster. My name is Carol Oster. I'm in my studio in New York City. The series I'm showing today are sculptures using personal archive materials. Thank you, Carol. Joan Blazes Levitt. Is Joan with us today? Okay. Tanya Kakuchka. Tanya Kakuchka. Hello, my name is Tanya. I live in New York and I'm a painter and a sculptor. Welcome back, Tanya. Bridget Pavlo. Bridget. Hi. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Bridget Pablo. I live in South Salem, New York, and uh, my artwork featured in this exhibit is done uh, digitally. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Teresa DeSavio. Hi, my name is Teresa DeSavio. I live in Cornwall, New York, and I'm a painter and also do videos. Karen LeFleur. Hi. My name is Karen LaFleur. I'm from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and I'm a digital artist, writer, and animator. Welcome back, Karen. Chuck Von Schmidt. Good morning. I live on Long Island and mostly work there. I do uh, sculptures, uh, printmaking, and a few other things. Welcome, Chuck. Norma Greenwood. Norma Greenwood. Okay. Rock I'm Norma Greenwood. I live in Manhattan. Um, I, uh, I am a contemporary uh, painter, figurative painter, and I paint in oil mostly. Thank you, Norma. Rosalind Schneider. Is Rosalind with us this morning? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, dear. Okay, um, I'm Rosalind Schneider. I live in Irvington, New York. Uh, the work you're going to see today is uh, video. Uh, I'm actually known as uh, an avant-garde filmmaker, and my videos also are a source of uh, digital prints that I then embellish and make them into paintings. So uh, it's good to be here. It's good to have you here. Stacy Schumann. Is Stacy here this morning? Hi. Hi, I'm Stacy Schumann. I live in Wisconsin, New York, and my painting is acrylic and mixed media. Welcome, Stacy. Leone Castellino. Hi, I'm Leone Castellino. I live in Mawa, New Jersey. I'm a fiber artist and I work in textiles. My work is Bojaki, which is pieced fabric. Welcome back, Leone. Susan Henley. Hi, I'm Susan Henley. Um, I live in 
Dover Plains, New York, uh, that's Dutchess County. Uh, my medium is watercolor and collage. Welcome, Susan. Pam Smilo. Yes, hi, I'm Pam Smilo. I live in New York City and I'm a painter. Welcome back, Pam. And now we're gonna have a short video introduction of Erla Thor. Erla is also the featured subject for Frank Matthijs, in other words, essay on the Hammond, um, Hammond website. Hello, hi everybody. I'm Erla Thorarnesdóttir. I'm in Reykjavík, where I live. Uh, but at this moment at the opening, I will be in the mountains east of Iceland. So unfortunately, I can't be with you. This virtual opening, this virtual exhibition, but all my greetings and wishes for good art and happy days. All the best. Thank you for letting me be part of this. Goodbye, everybody. Wonderful. Now that we've met all the artists, Douglas, let's begin our show. Karen Fitzgerald. The cloud said me, me, me. Oil paint with 23 karat gold on prepared paper, black background. A painting that imagines what clouds might think and say. Karen Fitzgerald, moon is wondering, oil paint with 12 karat gold pa on panel. A painting that imagines what the moon wonders about. Nancy Tucker, Dance of the Midnight Mouse, original solo guitar composition, MP3. We heard her piece earlier. And the next piece is Bone Path, Brian Sheridan. When I looked at the painting for this month's virtual exhibit, the conceptual work was triggered, generated specifically for Hammond submission in the response to the inspiration trigger. It represents threads of desire with diversions and effects. Cece McInter, Nest, Winter Deerskin, white horse hair, flax thread, steel wire on steel stand. Honor is implicit in humans' interdependent relationship with nature and paramount for me during intimate handwork with this material. One of the three deerskin nests charting a species life cycles over seasons. Others use summer deerskin and vellum shorn deerskin. Lined with horse hair, the nests communicate an intuitive interbeing. They counter the most dangerous environmental myth of our present era. That would impact someone or something someplace else doesn't impact me. Cece McInturf will be a short video healing digital sketch. Videographer Susan San Holland. Healing. One is an ongoing series of virtual exhibitions sharing process. In this case, Healing discusses the background and rationale for a work in progress titled Languages Not Yet Spoken. A 10 foot sable palm husk being woven with hemp cord for eventual suspension in an outdoor sanctuary. An architecture of silence merging solitude and resolve and the value of reflecting on background noise, its presence and its lack. Things I think about as I work with these. This is a rescued sable palm husk. I'm weaving it back together lovingly after it fell 40 feet down right in front of me. 
I've read that in creative work, a powerful identification and a projection takes place involving a maker's entire body and mind. And that's true here. And it's true with sewing. Sewing is intimate. It involves focus. My body and my experiences are at play as I sew. It's not simply an object and a problem to be solved. It's like skin. This is taking on odds. This is putting something back together after injury, disfigurement, failure, misunderstanding. You know, finding value and purpose and maybe forgiveness or beauty in a changed state. No. I think a lot as I'm sewing. I think I'm stitching possibility. I think I'm stitching healing. Carol Oster, Blocks Child Play One, Mixed Media, Wood Fabric, Toys Photography. This body of work explores the notion of permanence, impermanence, materials, memories, deterioration, resurrection. The materials used are excavated from the artist's cupboards, threads from a child, blanket toys, photos, rubbings, charred 4th of July sparklers, letters sent from a war. There are physical festiges gleaned to be reimagined in sculptural form, referencing the artist as a child growing up with a prisoner of war. Carol Oster, Blocks Child Play 2, Mixed Media, Wood Fabric Toys Photography. Using archived personal materials, Blocks Child Play series just supposes belongings a child would use in a play with the artifacts preserved from a war, such as V-mail, medals earned, maps, and rubbings. As a child and father share a home, these salvaged items live side by side, some buried in a wood or plaster and some buried in plain sight. Carol Oster, Blocks, Child's Play 3, Mixed Media, Wood, Fabric, toys, photography. The artist, having grown up in a railroad flat with no room to call her own, explored the hidden places under loose floorboards and kitchen tiles to save the written words and drawings belonging only to herself. Hiding objects in plaster, wood, or twine remains a way to commit a personal act of creation, as well as sharing what is available for discovery. Joan Blazes Levitt, square peg in a round hole, soft ground and photo etching. This antique pull toy was given to me by an incredible artist and friend who no longer graces the planet. The photo was taken by my father, who was an amateur photographer in the late 30s and early 40s. Toys, as symbols of childhood, often find their way into my etchings and paintings. Joan Blazes Levitt, Chords, Soft and Hard Ground Etching with Photo Etching. This photo was taken by my father of a Lithuanian immigrant teenager from the late 1930s, playing at a lake party, along with the fact that I grew up listening and dancing to polka music inspired this etching. This multi-step printing process required, required to print this etching is a bit complicated, but the happy outcome makes it worthwhile. Joan Blazes Levitt, Trumpet Call, Soft Ground Etching. This etching is one in a series of four. The small etchings of this series represent a few of the many unusual accordions and harmonicas displayed at the MIM, Musical Instrument Museum in Phoenix, Arizona. Musical instruments from across the world are works of art with incre incredible visuals and amazing sound. Dustin Osborne, Chinese base with plum blossoms, so dough bread, taken with Leica, printed on Moab burrito paper. When it was safest 
to isolate oneself from the pest. Beauty is found gazing at an ancient vase in humble surroundings. Tanya Kakuchka, Summer Snack. Summer treat, pink and pretty. Why not share? For me, this piece was a challenge. My goal was to do a painting using the color pink, a color I rarely use in my art, to create an image that looked pleasing and yummy and had the spirit of the summer season with a little humor thrown into the recipe. Dustin Osborne, Pijak and Orange, taken with Leica, printed on Moab Burrita paper. Francesco Pijak was a 14th century Italian humanist scholar, poet, and book collector. He discovered the letters of Cicero, saving them for posterity. He was one of the first mountain climbers to write about his adventures, ascending Mont Ventoux in southern France. He wrote a short autobiography that spoke to me as if we were in my study. During these months of isolation, there are many friends in my library that are willing to speak only if invited. These old tomes stacked on an ancient gem case make a precarious stack and foil for an orange. Bridget Pavolo, Birds, Digital. Bridget Pavlo's artwork implores us to take in our surroundings as we can find enlightenment in the smallest of things. Teresa Vislavio, Rolling the Dough, oil, pa oil paint on Arches oil paint paper. Rolling the Dough is one of my paintings inspired by life at home. These images suggest a sense of hope and optimism. I think of the paintings of Pierre Bernard and Berthe Marisat as I use the rich material of everyday life. Christina Astalash, Shotoko Okume, acrylic on canvas, diptych. Artwork is inspired by Edo Jidai or the Takugawa Jidai of Japanese history, 1603 and 1868 and Ukiyo-e art prints. And we're going to have a short uh, animation, Cameron Lafleur a cloud stream, hand-drawn animation, music by Nancy Tucker. Karen Lafleur is a digital artist, writer, and animator. Her artwork explores the interplay between interior and exterior, worlds with a focus on adaptability. The animation, a cloud stream, is the interpretive dream of a cloud, an origin dream expressed symbolically in imageries of liquid motion, buoyancy, and evaporation. And coming next, we have Mary McFerrin.
Mary McFilly, McFerrin, Blue Violets, Handmade Paper, Fabric, Chalk, Stitching, Collage, Block. Is there a boundary between internal and external vision? Collage can surely explore the fragile edge between reality and imagination. What a perfect time for us to wander between these worlds. Chuck Von Schmidt, Sakura, Serigraph. Last year, we had plans to go to Japan for the cherry blossoms. But on the day we were supposed to leave, I was diagnosed with throat cancer. Recovery has gone well, and to make up for missing the Japanese cherry blossoms, I decided to make one here. Norma Greenwood, The True Gift, Oil on Canvas. Imagine pillows as dream catchers. This idea intrigues me. These pillows, these dream catchers, contain our breath and our dreams. Norman Greenwood, Transported, Oil on Canvas. Each new piece of art I make is a retelling of my own story. Transported is decorative and expresses sentiment as well as beauty. Rosalind Schneider, Full Illusion, a short film excerpt, 2.5 minutes of a 10 minute and change video. Full Illusion explores landscape and water as a meditative abstraction. Most of the original footage was shot in negative, producing unusual color that transformed reality into a visionary experience. The transformation is further realized through digital layering. Water enters the landscape and progresses until it becomes the only image reflecting upon itself. Now for the video.
Erla Thor, Shell Shelter, Oil Color and Sheets of Silver on Canvas. A shell for the dear one in need of shelter. Erla Thor, O Positive Ear, Oil Color and Sheets of Silver on Canvas. We all have blood carrying oxygen to and carbon di dioxide from the tissues of the body. O positive is the most common blood. Over 80% of the human population has positive blood types and can in need receive O positive blood. Stacy Schulman, peonies, acrylic on masonite. I am often inspired by nature and have been waiting to paint peonies recently. When I saw the August Muse, I gave myself the task using my developing style of suggestion, texture, and antiquity. Leone Castellino, cocoon in pink, silk and poly organza. The cocoon symbolizes the right of girls to live in dreams. It is part of an installation exhibit in Seoul, South Korea called A Dream on a Dream on a Dream on Wings. China and India account for an estimated 1.2 to 1.5 million, 90 to 95% of missing girls. In India, one in nine deaths of female gender is below the age of five. Susan Henley, Anna, watercolor. I'm reminded of the Muladhara chakra. This vortex of energy is associated with the earth and the color red, could be pink. Anna is grandma. When the root chakra, Muladhara, think earth, is in balance, she is strong and grounded. Her three grandchildren lived with her for many years. Pamela Smilo, Pink Princess, Mixed Media on Paper. A lot of my work is inspired by joyful childhood memories. I remember I loved to play with paper dolls and dressing up with outfits from our dress up box. My mother had a very petite aunt who had tiny feet. We had a pair of her high heels in there and they almost were our size. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the August Muse that inspired the submissions for this show, done by Bibiana Hung Matais. Now allow me to introduce the curator, our Bibiana. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being this exhibit. I just love every single piece of artwork in this exhibit. It is so dear to my heart. Thank you all for being here. And thanks to all the artists that submit the work for this exhibit too. And this exhibit is now open on uh, Hammond's website. You'll be able to view this for the next year, the whole year, 24 seven. And we also have our last year, July exhibit and June's exhibit. So up today, I believe we have 120 total artwork on display on Hammond's website. And most of the work is, on, is for sale. And a lot of artists are open for commissions or assignments. And we also have our artist member page, director page that Douglas, with the raw medium lab have graciously that sponsored for the Hammond Museum. You can check up all the artists around the world. And I believe we probably have about 160 artists now. Not all the artists on the directory yet, we're still waiting for them to send in images, but you can see all the variety of artists, musician, visual artists, dancer, poet, and all kinds of different medias. 
And uh, we're gonna show you the upcoming news for the September, which you have till August 15th to submit your artwork to me. And we will see you on September the 5th, which is the, always on the first Saturday for our opening at 10 o'clock. And I will also now take, you know, thanks to our board members and our director for the Hammond and all our volunteers, Tilly for doing the social media and Daphne Douglas for doing all this work for the Hammond Museum. Without him, we don't have this virtual exhibit. And go, of course, you make this exhibit virtual exhibit so so dear and so wonderful and many many people just enjoy you and last month you're the biggest hit i probably have hundreds of emails saying how great they enjoy your performance too of your own poetry work so thanks everybody and we will see you um next time and next September. And also please remember support the Hammond too. We also need your help. You can also go on our website and donate your time, donate your money, wherever we do need them now. Thank you so much. See you next month.